Okay, hey everybody, and uh, welcome to today's podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to uh, get started with App Accelerator 4.0. We're going to have some discussion about what's kind of been new in uh, in the 4.0 release uh, across all aspects of the platform, and uh, give some exciting news about uh, something that happened yesterday. So if you weren't aware and didn't see the emails yet, um, we'll uh, make sure that you're you're posted. Uh, with me today is uh, Rick Blaylock. He is our senior architect here at App Accelerator. And uh, Rick, you want to say hi? Yeah, hello everybody. Good to see everybody turning out today. Yeah, and what a great uh, what a great turnout. We've got over 500 people that have registered for this tech talk. So a lot of excitement about uh, what we've got coming in 4.0. Um, so yeah, so Rick, um, why don't we talk a little bit about, um, you know, as we get into this, you know, just what is new with 4.0? I know in the past, you know, several weeks we've had a lot of uh, talk about Arrow, but there's there's quite a bit more than just Arrow uh, going on here. It's a really big release. I think it's the biggest release in our history at this point. Um, so uh, why don't you just give us some of the highlights from your perspective on uh, what you're excited about with the 4.0 release? Yeah, sure. So um, internally, um, just as products in the accelerator, we've kind of taken a theme internally um, of emphasizing uh, integration, collaboration, and acceleration. And um, and so I'm just going to touch on those things. 4.0 embodies those things, either starting laying a foundation for those things or implementing them. So as an example, integration, um, we have laid a, f a foundation for most much more of our products to be integrated. Um, so you'll, you're going to start to see analytics and cloud products and Arrow much more integrated with the client SDK. Um, um, so we'll talk about some of that here in a little bit. Um, SDK, for, you know, with the 4.0 release yesterday, uh, there was more than 300 Jira tickets addressed in the SDK, in the Titanium SDK. Um, now we have Windows beta support in it, um, built on how, and there's a blog post showing you how, to, how you can get set up on that, but that's all built on top of the Hyperloop abstraction layer. So that's our first operating system to support that, and we're moving for uh, iOS and Android uh, soon, too. 4.0 also has material theme support, and if you go, to, you'll see in the re release notes, we'll link you to the documentation and stuff, but you can actually um, use the material theme support and style it, things like that, which is really cool. Uh, we've got new installers now for Mac and Windows that um, should make it much easier to install especially for our enterprise clients too. Yeah, and you know, I think um, we've updated the Facebook SDK. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bert. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Rick. Okay. Um, we've added like the actual split view class for iPad now. Um, cross-platform APIs like attributed string, which was a really useful um API we added in iOS last year. Now we have it for Android. So now you can do stylized text and things like that. That's cross-platform. We got scrollable tabs finally, split action bars finally for Android. And then we added NS user defaults for iOS, which is really important for iOS extensions. And then in 4.1, we have Apple Watch support. You'll be using that a lot. So we laid that foundation. So that's a lot of the integration stuff that we have in 4.0. Um, collaboration. In 4.0, um, with the new CLI, the AppC CLI, um, we're laying a new foundation for collaboration. Uh, you know, it's, in its current form, as an ex example, um, if you want to share a widget or share some common JS code in a Titanium app or even a module, you kind of have to install all that manually. Um, so we're laying a foundation now where we have our package manager, which will let you install things from the command line or studio and drop it right into your project manage the version, things like that. And right now, today, we have that support for our Arrow apps. So for the new Arrow Builder apps, you can create a connector, you can share it with your team, um, you can say, no, I want to share it with the community, with everybody, or just with a few people. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a nice um, addition on top of something like NPM that, you, that you'd be used to. And um, the, the future vision is you could say, hey, AppC install Alloy widget, what, what, and, you know, fill out the ID, and it would, it would bring that down version for you and all that. Same thing with modules and things like that. So that's the collaboration um, foundation we've laid for 4.0. And then 
Acceleration is the third theme, and the big focus for 4.0 and that acceleration is Arrow, which is what Bert's going to show you today. Um, I, I've worked for Accelerator for um, four and a half years now, and I, I worked in the professional services group um, at the start of it, and one of our biggest um, pain points um, that killed our app velocity was APIs. And so this is looking to solve that. There's a lot of pain points with APIs, and and uh, we think we've we've really created something that makes it easy and fast to uh, create APIs, which Bert's going to show you. Yeah, and I've actually Go ahead, got Bert. some of the uh, the connectors, um, you know, and, and talking about the collaboration and some of those APIs. So I know that you've had your hands pretty deep and narrow in terms of um, you know what that is, and you know. Just to give everybody who may not know what Arrow is, it's an uh, it's uh, as Rick said, it's something that we've developed in house. It's an opinionated framework for connecting to all kinds of data sources, including um, our new um, Arrow DB, which is our cloud database that's readily available with your applications. And uh, you know, as we look at this, you know, we've got Box, we've got SQL Server. All of these can you know be you know connected to in just a matter of minutes, and so I think it's pretty cool. And the other thing, you know, is we're kind of looking at this uh, software.accelerator.com, Rick. I mean, you talked about the collaboration aspect, and that's something that, you know, from my perspective is pretty exciting, is that, you know, coming from the old Titanium developer days, it was really difficult to work with people on a particular project. You were sharing your username and password so that you could see what's going on behind the scenes. And, you know, with the 4.0 release and with some of our uh, uh, different tiered offerings, we now make it really easy to start collaborating between the uh, between projects and also sharing data. Now, one thing about the, the the marketplace is, you know, you said that you'd be able to download Allo widgets. You know, is that something, Rick, that is going to be, um, you know, just across the board public, or is that something that you'll be able to, you know, share just amongst a, a small group of people? How's that going to work? Yeah, it's up to you. So uh, what will happen is you'll have a, a JSON package um, that you can say, hey, I, I want this for people in my organization, only this widget for organization, or I only want people, um, these three people to have it. Or, or you can say, no, I'm publishing it to the community, and then everybody has access to it. So it's, it's flexible in that regard. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, I mean, I think that that's going to be key. Is like you know, you may have proprietary uh, you know UI code or code for logging into a particular uh, resource that you've created. You may not want to share that with everybody, but making that easy and consumable. And I know that's something that right now we uh, we're offering through the CLI, and uh, something that's going to be really tightly integrated into Studio too. So that you know, as you know, new app templates or app samples are available. You'll see those immediately when you go into, say, you know, create a new mobile project in Studio. You'll see what's available in the software marketplace. So that's really cool. Uh, well, thanks for that overview. It sounds like you know a lot of big changes with uh, the SDK, a lot, of, uh, a lot of additions to Android that I know everybody's been looking forward to. You know, getting access to Material Design is always a uh, you know it's been something that people have been up wanting for a long time, and glad to see that we're making strides in that that regard um, as well. So thanks a lot for the update, Rick. So you know one of the uh, key aspects I want to talk about is. Rick talked about a uh, the opening up of 4.0, uh, just kind of touched on it. But as of yesterday, if you didn't get the email, um, there's no longer a wait list for 4.0. So uh, when we talk about um, how to get started with this, um, you know, we're going to see some cool things today. But if you want to get started with the Appcelerator 4.0 platform, just go to appcelerator.com and enter in your email address. Uh, from there, you're going to be brought to uh, you know, go through a little bit of our validation policy where we'll send you an email and click the link. Uh, and then you're going to get access to all this new software. So we have a, uh, the enterprise version of Studio that we had released um, uh, about a year and a half ago or so. Um, that's now available. comes with Live View, which is our live prototyping capability. And uh, is something that is uh, you know we're happy to uh, to make available uh, to the general public. Um, we also have the Appcelerator CLI, so this is a new unified CLI. And Rick, maybe you may want to talk about some of the changes we made there because I know that you know with the new install that kind of affects how things may work with uh, people who are you know uh, upgrading, right? Uh, we might have lost Rick. 
Um, I know he ha he's a busy guy. So just to let everybody know, so with the AppSolar CLI, once you download this, this is going to be a, um, a unified CLI that wraps all of your existing titanium, alloy, and ACS CLIs that we've had before. So instead of having to reference multiple different um, CLIs through the process, you're going to have a singular CLI that you can use um, called Accelerator that is uh, designed to facilitate all aspects of our platform, whether it's building titanium applications, uh, uh, aero applications, um, you know, generating alloy widgets or anything like that from the CLI you'll be able to do through the Accelerator CLI. The other thing that uh, Rick talked about in terms of the, uh, uh, the install for Studio is when you download an install Studio, it's now a singular installer and we make that available and we're actually doing installs for Windows and Linux that are co uh, combined install. So everything goes underneath the Accelerator Studio directory. So um, we've removed a lot of the, you know, environmental issues as a result of, you know, where's my Node libraries or uh, Java or what have you. So a lot of changes there that should kind of streamline this process. So real quick, Accelerator.com to sign up, and then web.accelerator.com to go and and grab the latest uh, latest and greatest software from Accelerator uh, and get started with 4.0. Awesome. So, uh, so now what I want to do is just do a quick introduction to some of the new capabilities of 4.0 and uh, where we're going to be going here in the future too with 4.x. Talk a little bit about that. But um, let me go ahead and shut down the browser here. Right now, we'll come back to you. Hey, and, Bert, hey Bert, let me jump yeah. in real quick. Uh, Go for it. Um, so it, it looks like for some reason Crowdcast did it missed the first couple minutes um, of the intro. Um, so everybody, this there will be a recording of this, so you can definitely catch the beginnings of it. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why. Uh, it, there is a slight delay, but I'm not sure why there was such a slight delay or such a long delay there. Um, but uh, just a real quick rehash at the be what we talked about at the beginning. Um, so talking about 4.0 and, and uh, that, that's what we're going over today. And we're, you're going to see things, our, our three main themes are integration, collaboration, acceleration. And, um, and you'll see that here with some of the SDK stuff um, we talked about that some of you might have missed. Uh, Windows is now built on the Hyperloop abstraction layer. There's a beta available right now. Um, we've addressed more than 300 Jira tickets um, in the last few months um, for the SDK. Material theme is now available for titanium. Um, a, a, things like attributed string uh, for iOS are now available on Android. Split action bar is available for Android, things like that. So you can listen to the, the, the recording to get some of the other stuff we talked about, but um, uh, those are some of the, the things in the SDK that are available now. And um, Bert's going to show you our theme for acceleration. Our big product uh, for this release is Arrow, and he's going to jump in with that and some other things. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick rehash because I know some of you missed that. Go ahead, uh, Bert. Th thanks a lot, Rick. Sorry about that. Y'all not sure exactly what happened there. Hopefully it'll uh, uh, sort itself out when we release the video. Um, yeah, so as we're kind of getting started here, the uh, you know I think we're going to start – We've started this Tech Talk series, and we're going to try to continue this theme of, of you know, really proactive communication to everybody. You know, there's a lot in 4.0, as you know, we were talking about earlier. This is the biggest release we've ever had. Um, we're, it's an on-demand offering, so you can go and sign up today for our platform and get started with all the different types of features that we're going to be looking at today. The uh, um, you know, the Android material design that Rick was talking about, we've got a Tech Talk plan for that here in the next week or two. So we're going to really focus on that in an upcoming release uh, so we can give you a, a, a lot more attention to that. I think that's a big thing in 4.0 that we're excited about as well as uh, the new studio and Arrow and things of that nature. So uh, once, uh, as we were just talking, you can go to web.upseller.com once you sign in with your username password. And uh, that's the same username or password if you're an existing Titanium customer. And I did almost forget, and let me go ahead and come back to that, because this is...
information you can So that's a big aspect of you know, what we're looking to do is to help support our existing members take their old ACS applications, their old titanium applications, bring them into the new platform in a way that's going to uh, uh, you know, be as seamless as possible. So we're definitely excited about that. Uh, I'll try to come back to that a little bit later. Um, so fantastic. So here we are with Accelerator Studio. This is a new version. Um, you know, for all of you who joined early and got into this, really appreciate all the feedback um, that we have so we could um, address some issues there um, prior to uh, uh, releasing the invite open for everybody. So thanks a lot. And uh, thanks a lot to all of our existing Titanium uh, folks as well. I mean, it's been, you know, I've been with Accelerator for three and a half years. I've been developing on the stack for, you know, since about the very beginning. And, uh, you know, community effort the whole time everybody you know items from say the dashboard or you know RSS feeds or things like that that you want to uh, make sure is you know important to you when you're working on your mobile applications and bring that into the dashboard we have new sample applications we're going to be adding more over the next We know a lot of our samples. Uh, we're been getting Accelerator University out, so now want to can literally just on start Accelerator Studio button here, and uh, it's to go run Accelerator Studio. Think about that content whenever you want it. And, uh, you know, we have a whole uh, slew of videos on university.upcelerator.com that are waiting for you to get up to speed on the new studio, Aero, some of our sample applications, uh, um, that we are, uh, uh, that have been released. So to kind of get things, we're just going to walk through a few things and then go through kind of a developer experience on the, uh, uh, the platform. Um, right from the dashboard, we can import our new employee directory app. I've already uh, just imported it a second ago, but uh, just a couple of clicks and you can download the application. Here. Out, um, associated with this, you know, we can see where they are on the map. We can add and remove bookmarks. We see some metadata. There, but right now, this is really focused on uh, you know loading data from a local uh, JSON repository that's embedded in the app. Again, there's a sample app, so we just made that something that's very easy to do. If we take a quick look, we can see the data. Uh, you know, a simple app, similar look and feel here. Uh, and another tech talk here, as we said, for the uh, uh, material design. So you'll see how we make some enhancements to this. And then you're. If you know, applications you connect to uh, remote data sources, or you need to create remote data sources in the cloud. So 
what we're going to take a quick look at is um, how we can do that utilizing Arrow. And to do that, I'm going to create a new Arrow app. Now, I can do this from the new Accelerator CLI or from the dashboard, or I mean from the that is um, you know been really hard on making studio I have uh, and uh, so we'll keep it handy for what we're about to do and uh, again I could go and create new projects here or I can just from the drop down on project now area printing a builder uh, a uh, graphical interface for uh, designing and laying out all of your uh, uh, new APIs. And I'm just going to call this an employee server. And we'll hit finish. This is going to go ahead and create the application locally on my machine. It's going to register the application back with the Accelerator dashboard. And we'll see how that, that works here in a second. And uh, you know, from there, we'll have a quick and easy way to, uh, to access um, and create some new data sources. Once I uh, run the application, you can see it's package.json pops up. So this is a node-based application. Um, much like ACS, we've developed this on top of you know, our uh, previous node ACS ex ecosystem, made a lot of enhancements and uh, uh, capabilities to that. Just like any other application, we can use Studio to run it. I'm going to create a local server here. If we review the console log, it's going to install my dependencies that are necessary for this and allow me to move forward. I'll go ahead and close the, uh, the app.js and the package.json. And then once this uh, finishes loading, the dependencies and firing up, we're actually going to load the new Arrow UI directly within the application. Now, um, you know, this is something that... Actually, running uh, opportunity of change on or off the app. But from the Arrow project from a uh, folder structure, kind of highlight some of the key aspects here. And this really talks to some of the, uh, the key core concepts of what we're building with an Arrow application. So we have our employee server here. We have um, blocks, blocks are pre and post. Application. Now, the interesting thing here is that um, we're going to be building out a uh, real time. Let me just try running that locally one more time. Let's see here. Oh. Give it a second. And it looks like I added something to it and my module and didn't complete. So let's go ahead and delete and just start that process over. Arrow project employee to server. And we'll give that a second to it to load up. So with this, we're gonna and what we're gonna attempt to do here is you know basically go and create a new data source in the cloud that we can reference from um, our application. I can always, once we have the new project created, um, I may end up going ahead and using this existing project that I just created, but uh, I'll go ahead and run this local server and see if we can get that started again. 
Again, what we want to try to do is replace this list that's local with a remote server. And part of what we've offered with Aero, we have Aero uh, uh, on the Accelerator Cloud. This allows for um, you know Aero DB, which is our cloud-based data storage and file storage, um, as well as Aero Push, which is our push notification um, engine that has uh, been upgraded and enhanced to allow There will be a version of this directory application. So while that's continuing to load up, I'm going to go, go ahead and click on the user model here. We'll open it up, and we can see just at a basic level what we're talking about when we're getting into uh, some of the new Arrow capabilities. So when we talk about Arrow, again, we're going to have a graphical way to uh, create this model, but you can see very easily that we're able to uh, use our appc.arrowdb connector. So if you recall just a few minutes ago, we were looking at the software.accelerator.com website, and that is where you can publish, create your own connectors, publish those to the public uh, instance, or actually uh, keep those private. Here we have the Arrow docs that have just popped up. So uh, we can start to take a look at this as well. But very easily, we can dive in and see what we have available. So let me just quickly drag this over. And when it first loads up, we have a full documentation set. So when you're working offline, all the documentation is available to you offline, which is really handy um, because you don't have to worry about you know, uh, having to go and pull up Dash or something like that. All the documentation for Arrow is part of its own package. It also ensures that it's always up to date, which is great. Now, I can go ahead and look at the couple of different tabs that we have. We have API docs, build, which is API builder. We have uh, our data tab, which allows us to go and uh, edit and manipulate data that we are storing in the cloud or even from a remote source. And of course, we have some general logging within this. Now, again, this is running locally on my machine. But even still, you're going to notice that we have our unified navigation bar. Now, this is something that's also new to Accelerator, in that all of our new assets, whether it's the software uh, website, the registry in the marketplace, Accelerator University, the new dashboard, Arrow, all of this is tied into an integrated um, and unified website so that I can track all my latest uh, activity and notifications across my dashboard. I can see what's going on with all my applications through every single asset that we offer. It's also going to allow us to iterate more quickly because these can be many, many sites within a much larger ecosystem so that we can make changes and, and iterate quickly. And all of these sites are built on top of Arrow Web. Arrow Web is another key aspect to what we're releasing as part of 4.0, which allows you to um, create and stand up web applications very, very easily getting access to the same data and APIs um, that you've seen through, uh, uh, that we built through Arrow. So let's go to the API docs and check this out. So uh, immediately I have access to some of our common models. So Arrow DB is our cloud-based data storage. So we have file storage, photos, places, users, um, ACLs. Um, you'll recognize these from a lot of the same ACS services that we had in the past. We, we're changing the way that works as part of 4.02, so you have a lot more uh, flexibility around those services. And then we have our APIs, and so we see we have a couple of test APIs already here. And uh, one thing that's really nice is when you go and create a new API or you go create a new model, all of your documentation is generated for you. So you don't have to uh, you know, worry about documenting the application or your API tier. We do that for you um, as you actually build these out. So to step through and build a new data model, um, again, we're doing this all through Studio. We have our employee directory app. We're ready to go. I can see my data here. Um, I can call this employee. And then I have an option of different types of models that I want to create. In this case, I just want to do a schemaless model. 
um, and select my connector. I can do in memory if I just wanted an in memory data uh, data connector, or I can even use um, ArrowDB. In memory is really really good for caching data. Um, as we talked about with Arrow, we have a concept of blocks, which are pre and post hooks on top of your APIs that you create. And then you also have the connectors, which are how you actually connect to the backend data source. In memory connectors uh, make it really easy to stand up, say, a caching uh, system for a particular data set so that you can flush it out on uh, a timed interval or what have you, and then use a pre or post hook to actually cache that data. Um, in memory for quick and easy access. For this uh, example, we're going to go ahead and use ArrowDB. And I'll enter in some fields. And that's why I've kept this data.json open. I don't need all of those fields, but I do want to go ahead and take a look here and see if I can duplicate um, some of those fields for use in the application. So we have first name, last name, company, email, phone, and how about favorite, too? We'll add that in, too. And favorite is a Boolean data type. And you'll notice we have several different data types that we can choose from, including complex data types, like objects and arrays. I'll click Next. At this point, I have a choice of the in, uh, endpoints I want to generate. Do I want to do a create, a read, update, delete, or delete all? These all correspond with standard HTTP verbs um, and creating RESTful API endpoints. In this case, I'll just go ahead and select everything. And you can see that we have generated our model. Now, we're giving you access and letting you see the, uh, the JavaScript code. This is important just in terms of learning how to do things with Arrow is getting a, uh, a look and seeing how the code is generated. When I click Save Model, this is actually going to come over here and create the model under my models folder. So if I refresh that, oh, went ahead and did it for me. You can see that we now have our employee model. And if I need to make changes, I can always go back to the code and make changes directly in line with the code. So like anything else that we've done here at Accelerator, it's about giving you the transparency. It's about giving you a lot of control over the applications that you're developing. We didn't stop with Arrow. Any of the code that we generate for Arrow, you have full access to within your application. Now we can see that, uh, as we were talking about earlier, the employee uh, model has been created. And we've immediately created live APIs that we can start to leverage. So for example, if I wanted to come over here and look at the get employee API, I can see here's the, uh, the endpoint that I need to hit. What's my expected response? If I hit Find, we can actually test the API in line within the documentation, which is pretty cool. And of course, we don't have anything in there yet. So we need to add a couple of users. Uh, that's OK. I can actually do that directly through my uh, post API. If I want to do that here, I can come over here and say Bert branches accelerator. And give it a phone number and hit Create. Again, our expectation is we're going to have a 201 response, which we received. And if I come back over and hit my API test again, you'll see that that's been added to our cloud-based database. Even though I'm running locally, I'm hitting the Accelerator Cloud because that's where my data is being stored. If I wanted to, I could certainly come back over to my data tab, click on my employee model, and go ahead and just add another user here. We'll add Jeff Haney. And of course, he's going to be one of our favorites. So we'll go ahead and save Jeff. And we can see that that data is now readily available and consumable. What's very cool about this now is I have you know, sample code that I can use right away if I want to do test this out in curl. These APIs that are generated are fully protected. 
and I can take this down and extend it with titanium and add this into my application, literally just by cutting and pasting some code. If I take this code and copy it, this is, you can see we're using the titanium network object to create the HTTP client, et cetera. Now we can come back to our employee directory app and start to have some fun with it. Opening up our app code, I'll come back over to the directory JS file. Some of you might have seen me do this in a previous presentation, but literally I'll just navigate to the bottom of the file where we call our init function. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste the code. Now, we have Live View turned on. And I believe I still have it connected to my, my server here. So we'll go ahead and resave. And the application is going to refresh. There we go. And you can see that we're getting the alert and we're getting the data that we want. That's perfect. Now I can just make a couple of different changes here. I'll call the init function here. And uh, JSON parse out the response text. And then we'll come up to the top of our uh, file where we're actually loading in the data from the JSON file that we were looking at earlier. I'll change the init to expect some content. And we're just going to say users is now equal to data.employees. Go. I'll save the application here. We'll wait for our app to, to restart. Again, we're not having to recompile. Live View just automatically updates it. And there we go. We've got some great data in there. Now, quick and easy, we're able to add data to this application from a remote source. I have some imagery I could add into as well to get, uh, get some things added in, and we can go from there. The, uh, uh, it's a big win for us to be able to make it so easy to get access and create your own data endpoints, and so we're really happy about that. Uh, here at Upseller, is giving you that type of control, quick and easy to get data uh, set up in the cloud, and then also to uh, make it super easy to add that back into your mobile applications. Or as we saw from our arrow docs, if we wanted to use this data in a node app, we can cut and paste this code. We have uh, a web page that we're developing and we need to take, uh, you know, perform an AJAX request. We can certainly do that utilizing the code snippet from here as well. So really quick and easy way to get access to data. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this uh, running server here we're going to look at a little bit of an enhancement we've made to the employee directory app uh, to get some extended feature sets that'll talk a little bit more about the platform as a whole and what uh, you now have access to with push notifications, uh, geospatial services, um, as well as um, Arrow. So I'll go ahead and run the... Go run, and we'll do a local server here. And again, we're going to have uh, some models. But with this particular Arrow application, we have an MS SQL database that's in the cloud and running, and we want to hook up some complex data to it. And uh, so we can showcase how you can get access uh, to complex data. And then if I can pull open my, let's see here. May need to go ahead and restart my air server here. Pull up my live device. Here we go. So here I have my iPhone 6, and uh, we see that we have the app C directory here. And if we go to our uh, arrow. Arrow app, we're going to create just a quick example of how we can connect to multiple different data sources. So we have, uh, if we come back here to uh, API docs and look at our models, we have an employee data model that's set up. And this is really just to help us with uh, managing photos for 
the employee data we have in an MS SQL database uh, that I have in the cloud. Here you can see that we have some great data, including latitude and longitude that we're tracking through this particular data, database. Now, if I come over here to build, <clears throat> again, we'll say employees. And I'm going to do one of our complex models here. We'll do a complex join. And I'll use my employee from the MS SQL. Here you can see that we have gotten access to our MS SQL database connector. To do that, real simply, I'll go ahead and pull back up our software website. And on any one of these connectors, I can click on it. And now you can see how to get access uh, to this connector directly in your Arrow application. Literally one line of code is all that's required. Again, you can see we're using the AppC CLI to do an install of the connector. So I do this from within my project's directory structure, and it's going to download and install this connector directly into my project. Once that's completed, all I have to do is open up the configuration file that gets installed in my Arrow project, and you can see that I have direct access to my database here um, uh, just with a couple of lines of configuration. Once I do that, close up my config file. Once I actually create that configuration file and add in those values, let me go ahead and show you real quickly what happens. I got a little ahead of myself. If we open up APIs, you'll notice now that we have the MS SQL employee. Now, I didn't have to add this in. It finds this data, finds this data model by actually doing an examination of my tables. If I have 20 tables in my database, APIs will be generated, models will be created for each of those tables inside of the, uh, the Arrow application. You'll have full documentation of that data. And just like we did with ArrowDB, I can actually test those APIs directly within uh, the generated documentation hugely powerful for getting quick and easy access to data. We support full data transformation now um, as well. So if you want this in XML format, just change the, the expected content type of the application. And now I'm going to get this returned as XML data. Again, really, really easy, all thanks to Arrow uh, in terms of getting access to that data. And now we can actually use that to mash up against uh, multiple different data sources. So we'll come back, we'll choose our composite model. And I'll select my employee table from the MS SQL database that I have. And we're just gonna start selecting the, the values. You can see that we have uh, auto uh, selection based on what you're typing. Make it a little bit easier. Got my company, email, oh, wrong field, email, and we'll do latitude and longitude as well. So we can make sure that we're getting reference to that. Now, we also have an, uh, an ArrowDB data source, or AppCelerator's cloud-hosted ho data storage. So if I click on employee data, that's my ArrowDB database, I can pull down a little bit of information from it too. I have my Arrow ID that I want to leverage. Um, there's my employee data again. And I also want to get the photo. So you can see from our structure here that we put together uh, a complex object, and we can relate this data on the next screen. But the first things first, I know that my application is expecting the data to look a little bit different. So we can easily alias this as well. I'll go to camel case instead of the underscore. And that way, my app will immediately recognize the data when I add it in. Here, we'll create the parent model. Again, we have the employee. I can say, here's the ID I want to use for the join field. I can select the type of join I want. Employee data is the child. 
and it has an employee ID. Again, we didn't bring employee ID over, it wasn't necessary, but we can still use it as part of the join. Again, I can specify the endpoints I want, and it's gonna generate our model for us. It's gonna save the model, and just like before, we're gonna have direct access to that model from the JavaScript layer. If I ever need to go back and make a change, make some updates, I can do that very easily. Or if there's some enhanced things that I can do from the code that I don't have access to in the UI, I can take advantage of that as well. It's immediately generated the documentation. It's immediately made the endpoints available. If I do a find on this, you can see that it's pulling back data from my SQL table as well as our arrow DB here as, uh, as well. And the end result allows us to get access and do some user management here. So I can immediately see that I have, there's Rick Blaylock. If I tap on his user, I can see that based on the geolocation coordinates, we're actually updating in the SQLite database as well. When you log in, I can see where Rick is working from. So we've tied into some of our geospatial services as well as updating the database through a post API. I can, if I click on myself, I'll see that there I am in Austin, Texas, and uh, um, working from my home office. And one of the other cool things that we have access to with um, AppCelerator 4.0 is native SDKs. So with native SDKs, I can actually uh, start to consume all of the same types of services that we offer here as well. So for example, if I come over here and open up our platform and come over to my uh, the dashboard for AppCelerator, this is where you go to manage your applications now for your uh, directory app. You can see that I have my demo directory app running. I can see where it's running. This is real-time data. Um, I can also click to see what services I have available, whether it's an Aero service, a mobile application, et cetera. I'll go ahead and click on um, AppCelerator directory here. And I immediately jump in and can see some great, um, great analytics about the service that I just created. Um, so we have total number of API calls over a certain period of time. I can see the applications that are connected to this service. Here's my directory app. Here's the uh, directory server, uh, which is the ArrowDB instance that I've created alongside of Arrow. Also allows me to get access to documentation and logs very quickly. Let's go ahead and click on the Arrow DB, and now I'm back to managing my, my data. I can see all the API calls and services that I have access to. Clicking on Manage Data, I can come and look at the custom objects just as if I was in the Data tab within Arrow as well. I can select my employee data, see that same data that I have in Arrow DB listed out here as well. Again, logs and access to push notifications. Push notifications we've made some adjustments to so that um, you may have been familiar with our push notification architecture in the community, but now if we go to send push notification, you'll notice that we also have some really unique features that we made available to everybody within the platform. Uh, we can do uh, push notifications scheduling as well as send push notifications through a geographic querying and um, you know, deep user queries as well. So a lot of different ways that you can connect to your users, um, both from iOS and Android and coming soon Windows uh, with push notification. Now, as I mentioned, we also have the capability at some tiers to add native applications. So this means that you can enhance um, applications that were developed with Objective-C or Xcode as well as Android um, uh, directly through our new native SDKs. So you can add a native application, download our framework, and incorporate it into a native application. And for an example of that, I'm gonna pull up uh, Xcode here and just quickly run this application. Now, this app, we're using the native SDKs. to run the application, let's see here, and get access to some of the same data 
that we're using within this Arrow app. Let's see here. I may need to shut this guy down. Go ahead and close out. The there we go. And here we can see that the Apple Watch uh, is getting connected. Let's see if that's going to load up there. Uh, looks like we lost connection. Come back over here. There we go. And go ahead and stop and rerun. I had that running for a while. And it's going to reinstall the app. And our Apple Watch should connect here in just a second. There we go. Looks like it's trying. Give this one more try. Come on, little Apple Watch. Let's go ahead and shut them both down, and we'll just restart from scratch here. I think what's happened is it's running multiple times. Give the simulator a second to boot up. And what, we, what we've done for this particular application is you can see that we have uh, the accelerator framework installed in the application. Just a few steps uh, to install and uh, uh, add the dependencies required for our native SDKs to work. The native SDKs gives you full access to our entire platform. Um, there we go. We can see the Apple Watch finally booted up there. And much like you see here in our directory application, we have the same folks over here in our Apple Watch app. Now, again, I'll click on uh, Jeff Haney. We'll see where Jeff's at today. Looks like he's made it into the office. And uh, I'll click on my profile. And we built a little Yo feature, so we like to give everybody a Yo on the team a little bit. I can send a Yo to myself, or I can come over here and send a Yo to Jeff. And if I want to, we built the Yo feature directly into the Apple Watch app itself. So if I Yo Yo myself from the Apple Watch, we should get a little notification at the bottom there. Yep, I got it. And uh, this is all utilizing the App Accelerator platform. So we've added our native SDKs. We've created an Apple Watch app that allows us to communicate directly with our platform APIs for push notification, as well as getting access from Arrow, and uh, um, you know, and as well as generating analytics and crash detection capability um, for those that may be on the enterprise platform. What does this all look like? Well, if we take this and drive forward from where we were coming into push, I can look at, again, the, the applications that are utilizing this particular server. I can dive into the Arrow app here. I see the applications that are util utilizing this Arrow app. Clicking on the directory here, I can see the, the key performance indicators of this particular application. I can look at key analytics associated with this app. Now, this is something you can see we have real-time data. I have one session open right now. Uh, the average session length, a little bit short at the moment. I can dive in and look at historical sessions. I can filter this data by production versus development, or I can look at all environments. I can look at the last 30 days or even create my own custom date ranges. I can look at sessions by geography. So where have people been using this application? 
Um, and where do I need to spend some more time, you know, understanding my usage and adoption metrics? We're able to put in event data. So on every button click, on every page view, I can actually create and capture these events just as, uh, as you were before in Titanium. You don't need to make any changes to your existing applications to take advantage of this. All that data is coming into the real-time dashboard. And I can create event funnels based on uh, the events that we're creating as well. So how many people were logging in and then how many of those people actually created and clicked on a bookmark? You know, this is the type of data that you may want to look at in your application, especially if you're talking about going through a particular flow. Um, you know, it could be a revenue generation flow. It could be filling out a form. Where are people getting uh, falling out of the process? How many people are clicking on a contact and then also giving them a yo? In this case, we can see we got, have a pretty high margin there. So a great way to get access to the data that you're creating through your application. And this is all coming through that integrated platform experience that we're now offering out to our entire community. So really super excited about this um, because it gives us, you know, uh, it's kind of the culmination of a lot of the working effort that we've done uh, in the, uh, the past year and a half. Um, and we're really excited to bring this into the, uh, uh, into the community. So we really hope that you are able to get down and start taking great, uh, great advantage of what the platform has to offer. We're really looking forward to hearing your feedback and uh, seeing what you can do on top of the platform as well. Now, with that, I know we're at the top of the hour. I'm going to go on just a little bit extra since we had a little bit of a hiccup there. And uh, let me go ahead and bring back up the... Uh, and stop sharing. And I'll do my best to answer a few questions while we are uh, on talking about the uh, uh, the 4.0 release. So a big question that's popped up here and uh, that we want to try to answer is how does the speed of Accelerator 4.0 compared to writing the apt in Swift? And that's an interesting question. Well, there is a, a lot of advantages to Accelerator 4.0 over Swift. Um, we love Swift here at Accelerator, to be honest. It is a really cool uh, development language for iOS. The problem with Swift is it doesn't work with Android or Windows uh, or HTML5. So from our standpoint, we see Swift as a great language for developing iOS apps. Our native SDKs that we were just talking about can be incorporated into Swift apps so you can gain access to all the platform capabilities, whether it's our uh, pre-built services around geofencing, geospatial services, et cetera. Um, it also uh, gives you quick and easy access to push notifications and storing data in the cloud or accessing your Aero services. So we're really happy that our native SDKs can really enable those Swift developers to create those robust backend services and leverage our platform in that way. Um, it just doesn't do much in terms of cross-platform development. So we still see a high, de you know, uh, high degree of compatibility across um, iOS, Android, Windows, and mobile web. Um, you know, it's going to uh, continue to grow, but you know, anywhere from 80 to 90% code reuse uh, or more in some cases. Um, from what uh, people are able to get for writing for a single code base. So that's the only problem that I see with Swift is that, um, you know, we're answering a different type of question, which is how can we build robust and exciting applications um, across all the different app, uh, platforms that we support. Uh, 36, we need a UI design tool for app design. And I'll repeat that since I hadn't answered the uh, hit the button yet. So the other big uh, aspect is we need a UI designer for Accelerator Studio. Um, not going to spoil anything for everybody, but uh, I would say look forward to a, an upcoming tech talk in the near future. We've got some exciting news. I'll leave it at that. 
So uh, some Hyperloop questions. That applies more to, to the Windows and HAL. Uh, I think that's worth a whole new tech talk on its own. So we'll probably do some updates there. Um, bootstrapping for the watch kit. So we saw that we were able to create a watch kit app today, which is uh, integrating with Accelerator services. Uh, we have some really exciting work that's coming in uh, 4.1 for extensions and watch kit, as Rick mentioned earlier. We've laid the groundwork for that in 4.0, um, and we'll continue to have some updates on that in the near future. So keep keep ready. You can definitely take advantage of watch kit with your apps today. Um, and uh, certainly if you're utilizing our native SDKs, you can take advantage of the full platform as we saw with WatchKit and your applications written in the native languages. Um, what about performances of Windows native apps? Will be similar to iOS and Android? Um, yeah, so you know we're working very, very diligently on Windows. We have it open for, uh, available for beta right now and developer preview. Um, we're still looking at a, a mid-year time frame for uh, when that's going to be released. So uh, keep your eyes peeled and uh, certainly welcome you to go and, and get started with the beta. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on that uh, as we are uh, getting into uh, kind of the, the downhill slope on V1. Uh, will there be more material design support and Android development? I saw a lot of uh, uh, discussion about this on the question thread. So absolutely, um, as you noted in this, uh, this release, we, uh, uh, we have a lot of new support for material design. You can use material design-based themes. We have the split action bar, the scrollable tabs, um, much greater control over styling your UI. Um, those are some other points that I don't know if Rick mentioned or not, but uh, like switches and things like that, you have a lot of control in terms of how you can manage that all through uh, th theming your application material design. So um, as mentioned, we'll do a tech talk on that probably here in the next couple of weeks so we can uh, dive in deeper and showcase how uh, working with Titanium. Let's see, a couple more. So in terms of the, uh, so this is a good question actually, it's about what we'll be offering in this, uh, for free in this new situation. So when you sign up for a, uh, a new Accelerator platform account, um, you're automatically gonna get all access to the features of our team. Um, this is something that is what we call a developer preview, um, where you don't have to pay for it to start actually experiencing some of the feature sets. When you're looking at publishing your application and moving forward, then you have the option of multiple different tiers. We have an indie tier, the team tier, and then of course our enterprise. Um, on Indie, you're going to get access to push notifications, um, our analytics, so the dashboard capabilities that we see see there. Uh, you're not going to get all of the platform services that we've seen previously, but um, uh, here today. But you certainly have a good look. Um, I'd suggest going to the pricing tab at Accelerator.com to see more information on that. So let's see if there's just a couple more questions here. Let's see here. Uh, this is a good question. I don't know if I know the answer offhand. So it says ACS to AeroDB data migration seems to have a deadline of June first. Um, you know, how can they uh, uh, get migrated over? So as I mentioned, um, really important. I'll go ahead and bring this back up. If you do need to migrate your existing applications, you can always come back to the. Uh, getting started with that Accelerator tab at web.accelerator.com and click on Migrate Your Apps. Uh, this is going to uh, give you kind of a step-by-step -step migration tutorial for what you need to do to migrate your both your Titanium applications as well as your ACS and Node ACS applications uh, through the dashboard. Uh, titanium apps are pretty painless. You just import those directly into Accelerator Studio and start to use those. You have a, uh, a little bit more that you have to take advantage of for um, your Node ACS, um, migrating to AeroCloud and AeroDB applications, you can see down here. So uh, 
just a handful of steps and you should be good to go. If you are having any difficulties, feel free to post it on our new community website at community.upcelerator.com. And, uh, or if you have access to our support, definitely go through and um, uh, work with our support teams um, if you run into any issues. So I think for right now, um, that should do it for questions. Um, we'll try to come back and get all the questions answered um, as best we can. Please keep your eyes open for the next uh, announcement about our Tech Talks. Um, like I said, we're going to be covering topics from um, the new features of the SDK uh, for material design on Android. We have WatchKit that's going to be coming up here in the near future. Um, more about Aero, of course, and how to get deeper into some of the, uh, the capabilities there and uh, what we can do to, to help support your development in that front. We're also going to be mixing it up and just throwing in some general discussions about design topics and things of that nature. A lot of new stuff coming your way, um, as well as maybe a few surprises, and uh, we can't wait to show them to you. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope you all enjoyed our uh, tech talk today. And uh, please feel free to send us your feedback and uh, let us know what you want to see next. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great afternoon.